Welcome to Raw Down, episode, what is this, six? I think it's six. I, Who's I, counting? Man, I th- we're in fucking post-Royal Rumble. What a what a time this is. How's everyone doing? A lot better than the Royal Rumble, that's for sure. Oof, what a, what a fucking terrible Rumble. Man, looking back, I thought, you know, the past couple of years have been rough for the Rumble. And I'm like, damn, the good old days used to be better. No. No, they they certainly did not. No, nostalgic glasses really hit you, man. Who's here today? We got we got Joe. Hello. And we got Martin today. Hello. Nico will be here later. He sadly couldn't make it, but he'll be yep. there. He'll be there. <laughs> we we're on the January thirtieth episode of Raw. We start off with Mister McMahon coming out and yelling about how Shawn Michaels is stupid and just really bad, and he wants Shane. To just continue to beat him up. He hates him. What do you guys think about this segment? Man, Vince wants what Vince gets, I guess. Because <laughs> incurring the name Shawn Michaels then brings him out in a tuxedo that... Or oh, not it looks a tuxedo, so a, bad. A big monkey suit that doesn't fit <laughs> and it doesn't match. Shawn Michaels has got negative drip here, I think. Yeah, zero. This man looks awful. And then... uh <laughs> He says, suppose I could do the good Christian thing and turn the other cheek. Just quit. I mean, who needs the hassle? But I know you. I know you just sue me for breach of contract. It's Vince like, I'd sue you for every cent you're worth. And I get and it, too. And he get it, too. And then he goes, well, you know what? What if I just go back to partying, drinking, and pill-popping? And then Vince like, yeah, 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 I really want that. I don't know why he's so excited for uh, – one of his top guys to be a fucking drug addict, but because Vince was a drug addict with him too, probably. <laughs> and then uh, Sean's like, "But I love my wife, I love my children, and that's never gonna happen." And Vince uh, brings up Bret Hart, saying that uh, I'm gonna screw you way worse than Bret. And if I really like, cause, you know, like, he's like, "Listen, I have power, and I want to abuse it. What's wrong with that?" And then he starts like yelling at the crowd, saying, "I could, I could fire everyone over here." I could fire you. I could yes. fire everyone. Vince is famously being very is restraining himself from abusing his power here, which I mean I gotta say very give it give it up to him. Yep. Very yep. proud of Vince. Thank you, Vince. Thank you for not abusing your power in this one exact moment. Mm-hmm. Thank you, sir. And then Sean gets really angry, and so he starts like you know getting uh he's like listen you got little balls, he says I thought you got big balls but you got little balls. He calls them grapefruits. Yeah, he's that. Yeah, he he says he used to have big grapefruit balls, king size. But then he looks over and takes a gaze over at Vince McMahon's groin area mm-hmm. and is wondering where the grapefruits went. <laughs> and uh, they even bring up the steroid trial too, which is pretty wild. He's like, "You took on the government and brought them to their knees." And so Vince goes, "You know what?" I'm going to let you commit career suicide. He gets on his knees and goes, hit me, hit me, hit me. And Sean just gets red face. He doesn't want to actually do it. I don't know why. I really don't. I guess because of that zero tolerance policy. And then Shane just comes in and hits him with the nastiest chair shot of the night. I swear to God, I went, oh, my God. (laughs) Shane killed that man. (laughs) Yeah, he fucking fell over like he paralyzed him or something. That's what he gets for not doing drugs. You know what I'm saying? That segment had me laughing because it's just... Sean yelling about fucking you want me to do drugs and Vince was just wanting it so bad he's a little freak Vince got on his hands and knees begging Sean to either hit him or like smoke from a crack pipe yeah it was incredible um and then right after the break Vince and Shane were walking back and Todd's like why'd you do that and he goes it's about respect that's it that's all Mm -hmm. that's all you get what do you think about this Martin I bet you have like thirty pages of notes on this. I do, but you said everything. <laughs> Woo! I did it. <laughs> Next match, we got Rob Van Dam. He's back, and he's got to fight the gross Snitsky. That man looks. Oh. Listen, I don't want to talk about anyone's appearances, but that man looks grotesque. That man is looking greasy and greasy. gross. Greasy. I think that's the gimmick, though. Is that he's supposed to look bad? RBD fucked up for this gimmick, and then they fired him. Yeah. 
<laughs> Wait until we get the bald Schnitzky, and then, dude, I hated his second theme where it's like Schnitzky, and then you hear the little like piano, like da na 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 na. That shit gave me like heart palpitations as a as a kid. I swear. Tonight's Raw is sponsored by Subway and Castrol GTX. For those of you that were yeah, wondering. Yeah, can we get a shout out to Subway and uh, Castrol? You gotta order the tuna sandwich from Castrol GTX though. You gotta get the tuna because Subway don't got it. Um, <laughs> this match was not that bad. I, I I went into looking at the match card the uh, like this morning and I was like, man, RVD versus Schnitzky, this is gonna fucking suck. And it was probably like the third best on the, on the card. It was not that bad. R- RVD like went up to the top. He was messing up a lot in the beginning. I think just ring rust, but he jumps yeah, he off and said shit into the ring. <laughs> up a, some kind of spot one of his many schnitzky just killed him with that clothesline man i thought i got i popped i was like, oh okay schnitzky and, yeah even uh, even with the ring rust um that was clearly apparent i mean rvd is still carrying the hell out of this match because all schnitzky did was run into the turnbuckle uh-huh. and then put his arm up rvd is the one that jumped back and then fell flat on his back yep just to to have that clothesline look good at all yeah, and what, the last time we saw Snitsky was like a, what, a, a less than a minute match against Kane? And now yeah. he's getting a six minute match against RVD. It's moving up in the world. Went way too fucking long for what it was. A lot of rest holds, a lot of uh, just reverse chin locks, crowds chanting Snitsky sucks. Yeah, well, uh, they're right. <laughs> huge power slam, RVD gets back up. Hits him with that that uh, spinning heel kick. Schnitzky, uh sends him into the ropes, and then uh, just another spinning. He loves that move. Press slam, but Rob slides off. Hits him with another spinning back kick. Frog splash. That's the three. It's six minutes and five seconds. I'm I'm still really surprised that, like, um, given RVD's um, hobbies, that they still like protect his shit like very heavily Mm -hmm. like the frog splash like the way he does it like you could have gone the ref could have gone a seven count and schnitzky still would have been out you know because the way he the way he lands that frog splash it like blasts over him and it basically is doing like damage to him like he's in some kind of fucking like superhero show or some shit do you think he's still in that ring like oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100%. I haven't seen Schnitzky in years. I don't, what, what arena are we in today? We're in some place in fucking Orlando. Yeah, let me see. Are we in Orlando? Okay. Yeah. Pretty sure. Somewhere we in Florida. Gotta, we got to be in Florida that. because yeah, Carlito got killed by Shaq, apparently, and we can't find the footage. We'll bring it up <laughs> later. Our best start working on that footage. Stay tuned. Dude, can you believe Peter Gabriel is the theme of WrestleMania? Peter, I... I'm seriously, I'm sitting there listening <laughs> yeah. to fucking Peter Gabriel playing in the back. Like, dude, dude, dude. Like, this is not a WrestleMania Big time. Theme. Get out of my fucking <laughs> face, Peter Gabriel. Peter Gabriel, I know you're listening right now. I just need to say to you that you might be an okay musician, <laughs> but you are not WrestleMania theme material, okay? Bring back Limp Biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> Bring him back, okay? Just one... More time, and I'll be and for you. Let's hey, do it my way. Fred, Fred, don't don't catch us on that one, okay? That we're just having some fun here. Fred, don't copyright us. Fred, I loved your movie with John Travolta. <laughs> that was a really good one. I still watch it. I have I've only watched it once, but you know, Martin, what do you think about that match? It went too long. The po- he hit him with a cool power slam. Almost dropped it right on his neck. That was rad. Yeah, Schnitzky is not really safe in that ring, is he? But nobody really was at this time. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't really tell what was RVD just fucking up and what was Schnitzky just being bad. The two Schnitzky matches I've seen are this and the one last week or whatever where Kane just beat him in like 10 seconds. No, that was a month ago. And, and him kicking a baby. This is my Schnitzky knowledge. <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't got the baby kicking Schnitzky, the Kane hating Schnitzky. We get the... Gross Schnitzky, the su- the the Sunday night heat Schnitzky. Maybe you know, maybe we'll 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 do a little heat velocity catch up since heat or not heat's heat's gonna keep going for a couple of years, but velocity's dying this year, in two thousand six for uh, EC Dub. 
So maybe maybe we could take a look at each of them in like a big big segment. But we'll see if we have the the energy to do that. So yeah, we got this. Peter Benj- Gabriel, oh, let oh. us know in the comments below if you want us to review Heat and Velocity. Peter, please. I know you're a big fan of Raw Down and not Smack Up. Can we get a confirmation? Yeah. Sweet. Appreciate you. Thank you for all your support. And we we love your WrestleMania theme. We were just joking before. I love the way you sing that. Get it? Like the song you do. <laughs> all right. All right, Mr. Joe. I think you had some things to say about oh, Benjamin and Goldust my promo. My goodness. Well, look. Shelton, with all the potential that he has, is just not displaying it. He got eliminated during the Royal Rumble after he promised he would eliminate Shawn Michaels at the behest of Mr. McMahon. Total failure, making his mama look bad. So tonight, um, you know, he's getting an earful from his mother. You know, rightfully so. You know, you can't be putting stuff on other people's names and then and then not deliver, you know. So he's, you know, he's got to get back in that ring. He's got to, you know, he's got to make his mama proud. Mm-hmm. So he, he gets up out of there. You know, when she comes back, she expects a foot massage. A back rub. Oh. Uh, a, was it a back rub? <laughs> well, I think it was everything. She's just like melting she, into that chair. She, she needed everything <laughs> rub, honestly. With the way Shelton oh. Benjamin has been failing recently, she needed everything rub. Yeah, feel that, man. And it, seemingly he came back right away and just, you know, went to town on those shoulders for his mama. And she was uh, being relaxed until it was revealed that it was the Prince of Perversion himself. It was Dustin Rhodes. Gold dust. No, he wasn't dressed but, up. <laughs> it, was, it was Dustin himself, just plain no face paint. No, it was it was gold dust, uh, just putting the work in on on Mama, and, and he 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 probably could have stayed back there for like another ten minutes if he didn't if he didn't like Heavy whisper breathing. and like, <laughs> pants into her ears. Truly a perverse scene. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry to all the audio listeners. No, I don't but... apologize. They love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get fucked. Thank you, Peter How Gabriel. How listen to this show? <laughs> <laughs> like this. Like, hey, whoa. Undertaker. So she jumps up out of her seat and is surprised to see none other than Goldust. Uh, I guess make his return again. I just During he the Rumble, the Rumble just yeah. didn't. Yeah, didn't realize he was on any of the shows, and then he showed up. Must be a heat velocity thing. But yeah, he he lost he's back on the, he's back on the big one, and damn near gives Mama Shelton a heart attack. She's reels him, gets him out of the 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 backstage uh, room, and you know she's like she's having trouble breathing. It's it's disgusting. I can't believe Goldust did that to Mama Shelton. Yeah, she has like an oxygen tank with her too, just like constantly huffing that shit. Yeah, well, she needs it. I mean. You kidding me? She scared. He scared the the daylights out of her. Do you have Do you have anything that uh, Goldust uh, said to Mama? Oh, oh gosh, what did he say? I feel like going off memory, he said something about like rubbing her all night long. I feel like that's something he would have said. He said that he's a master of the golden shower. Oh, oh that's yeah, that's right. Huff. And then she was like, <laughs> "Yeah, you're nasty," and then like fell over. <laughs> Yeah, that one really knocked her back. Fucking convulses but, uh, on the couch again. <laughs> <laughs> he he reluctantly uh, makes his retreat, um, and Shelton is is being called for by his mama. Where did he go? <laughs> Where did Mama Benjamin send her boy? Shelton doesn't give a shit. He just tipped. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> He's out. Then what you think about that? And then you know, you got that Maria coming in and Triple H. Oh, uh, Triple H. Uh... I just want, real quick, I want to point out that, uh, well, one, I have to do my uh, weekly, we don't condone the treatment of, uh, I'm just going to say gay and trans people is what Goldust is at this point, but, you know, the whole Goldust bit, we don't condone the treatment of that, but also it is kind of funny because Mama yells, Shelton, there's some old freak in here. (laughs) (laughs) He doesn't know who this is. I thought that was pretty good. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Mama. Yeah, but then it transitions backstage to Maria interviewing Triple H and basically insult him by insinuating that he was not able to get the job done and was this close 
making a very small gesture that he he was very much not able to to close out the Royal Rumble as the winner. What and... is what is up with this? Like the, we had the past two shows of Triple H being called like a man who can't can't finish in bed and has a small penis. Like what's what's been up with this? He's an insecure beta male. We all know this. That's why he's you the bad guy. That, yeah, you can tell that anytime you watch anything he does. I'm sorry, Nico, number one Triple H. Man. You <laughs> feel the insecurity that just pervades from Hunter on all of this because he's a B plus player and he knows it, but he has to pretend like he's not. Let's go. And now he's putting it on screen. Oh, man. Nico's going to have to defend himself against that one. How will he fare? But yeah, I mean, basically, Triple H gets insulted by Maria, um, who, again, is being for portraying a person stupid enough to not realize uh, she's insulting him. But it doesn't matter because Triple H basically swears that he will destroy somebody. He, he can't destroy Eddie, who he says is in some higher echelon of heaven beyond even God to have Rey Mysterio win the Rumble over Triple H. Mm-hmm. He can't beat up Rey Mysterio because he's not on... Triple H is not on SmackDown. Thankfully, I mean, still, though, it's disgusting that a SmackDown person won the Rumble. But he was wearing red during the Rumble, so we'll take it. The only person he can really beat up is is Chavo. Uh, <laughs> the next l- best l- thing. L- balding nephew of Eddie Guerrero. <laughs> so that's what he's going to do. He's going to beat up that man who won't shave his head. So you know how like, Vince loves his little nicknames for everybody? Like, uh-huh. uh, you know, Brock's the next big thing and everything. So is uh, Chavo just the balding nephew? Because he's got to he be should. the balding nephew. I think that's his new name from now on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The new and vicious <laughs> balding nephew. <laughs> and I laugh so hard at that segment because uh, Triple H huffs and puffs and, like, gets really sweaty. And then you just hear, time to play the game. I thought the, I didn't know the match was on next. I just thought he was, like, calling out Chavo. And then they were going to have the match later. And then he's like, no. It's now. I hate you, Chavo. <laughs> it was pretty cool, though, honestly. I mean, he, he may be a guy that's extremely insecure, but he certainly secured his image as a guy that kind of looks cool. Yeah. So good good for H. Comes out, they have to go to commercial break, and then they come back again. Well, no, they didn't go to commercial break. They, they showed the placard for the main event, which is the John WWE Cena, yeah. new... WWE champion John Cena versus Edge, who's cashing in his rematch clause. And wow, what a fucking, what a fucking like hot potato clause that was. Good job, fucking Vince. Yeah, he Stupid also, he also said in the beginning he didn't want to be a transitional champion and that he wants to uh, not wait till the Saturday night's main event, which I completely forgot was like the next show that Raw has and it's going to be in March. So. I guess we will we will be covering Saturday Night's main event as a as a big big conglomerate, big group because we got because it's Raw and SmackDown on the main event. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So we got the that Triple H Chavo match. Oh, oh yeah. Speaking I mean, of which, Schnitzky didn't come out with an entrance. He just showed up. Chavo didn't get an entrance. I want to hear U Chavo. This is bullshit. Yeah, this is bullshit. Agree. We we, we deserved an U Chavo, but. But they get to it. They get to the match. Triple H lumbers his way to the ring eventually. Um, and, I mean, Chavo's really, like, showing his, like, technical whatever, you know, as, as a wrestler. Getting him into, like, takedowns and drags and, and flipping him over and shit. Putting him down, headrest. I mean, that's all it was for, like, eight minutes. What is, like, technical, like, headrest shit. And then Triple H maybe got, like, one takedown arm drag in, even though he's, like, a solid foot taller than Chavo. I was uh, surprised at how much Ch- Triple H was taking. This match, oh, was, yeah. this match was the match of the night, and I'm not joking about that. And I was mad to say, I'm like, Triple H had the match of the night. This is bullshit. But he actually yeah, let right. Chavo do his business, and Chavo did the business. And it was mm-hmm. fun. It was fun to watch. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, he, like, was whipping him into the ring, jumping around, um, you know, and Chavo's really got him on the fucking ropes here, you know, taking him out to the ring, letting the ref count up to eight, jumping over the ropes and, and slamming him down, giving him a drop kick, and then Triple H eventually, you know, gets back into the ring and just fucking demolishes Chavo, gives him, uh, what does he give him, like a spine buster yep. to kind of to ring it back into his favor, and the fucking thing 
I love about Triple H and and more specifically the way he like wrestles. Um, not that all his matches have to be twenty five minutes, but the way that he does like sell shit because the way he like does that like full body uh, Irish whip to mm-hmm. people into the turnbuckle, it just looks fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Like he like it himself is like flying onto the floor, putting everything he has into it. The other guy gets slammed and and fucking knocked uh, down to the turnbuckle. Sorry for swearing so much, but no, it's just it. it's just good shit. It's such good um, shit. And Chavo eventually is able to uh, reverse the momentum and, and drop kicks Triple H out of the ring. And the way he falls out of the ring, too, is, like, sick. He could easily have just, like, hit his head on the apron and fucking broken his neck or something. Yeah. But it just looks sick. It's just, it, like, w- when they throw their whole, like, body into that, for all the all the negatives and, I guess, like, sins that Triple H has, you know, he, sometimes, he doesn't really half-ass it too many times. Even though it looks like it's all his matches go on for maybe three times as long as they should. I felt like this uh, match went on the correct amount, though. It was 10 minutes. 10 minutes and 15 seconds is what I I have in my notes. Yeah. Yeah. That's but just because he's a slow wrestler, I don't think that means he's like, he like takes it like easy. You yeah, know, listen, it's just his style. It wasn't the longest match on the card, and that's impressive for a Triple H match. Another plus for the King of Kings, baby. That finish yeah. was also really good, too. Oh, yeah. Take me through it. Take me through okay, it. Okay, so Chavo went up to the top rope. Triple H gets up and then uh, drops him on his little his balls because he's mad. And Triple H goes up, and then Chavo fights him off. I was surprised about that. Chavo goes for the frog splash, misses, gets nothing, and then just right into the pedigree, and it was disgusting. And Triple H gets the pin and the win. Oh, yeah. I like even. Match. Even after, like, he, like, mocked the the Eddie, Eddie yeah. like, uh-huh. Viva La Rasa thing. Like, he did it two times. And then Chavo both times, like, well, the first time he catches him on it and then gives him the three amigos. The second time, Triple H tried to throw him out of the ring, much like how he eliminated Chavo during the Rumble. Tried to throw him over the top rope, but Chavo was able to hold on and try to come back. But Triple H was expecting it somehow and just gave him, like, a, a hellacious spine buster. Yeah. Uh, which then goes into that that uh, segment, and I don't know. I gotta feel like, like even with that pedigree, you know, he like he keeps the arms up too, just like kind of classic H. But like he, he, the last second he pulls back, and and Chavo's able to not get brain damage from the from the pedigree. So we'll we'll take it here. We'll take it. It was it was a good match. Um, real quick, go back to RVD Schnitzky. I gave it a one and a half. Give it a one and a half. What'd you guys? Th- what would you guys give it? You can make up your own ratings. It's fine. I would give it a uh, an RVD out of Sweet. ten. Sweet. What would you What would you say, Martin, about RVD Schnitzky? Just real quick, one word or star. I give it a joint with a bunch of seeds in it out of ten. That's awesome. Nice. This Triple H match, I'd give it two and a half. I thought it was awesome. Great match. I enjoyed it. Watch it. Do you also give it an RVD out of 10? No, I give this should have been 5 minutes instead of 10. <laughs> just corral himself to a 10 is impressive. I don't know if you wanted to talk about the commentary here. I know you made a note of it earlier in the group chat. I did. Yeah, so if you want to talk about it here, I'll tee you up for that. But oh I just my God. Say, this is the worst effort the commentary <laughs> has put forth. Since I've been doing this. I usually don't notice, but they were terrible and so annoying tonight. let me go back to the vince segment real quick so jonathan coachman says you don't mess with the boss baby i don't know how he knew about that movie coming ahead but he i'm really proud of Gary lawler's heart attack the other week so <laughs> yeah clearly and, he john uh and, coachman has seen the vision and, and a coach also says chavo guerrero is related to eddie i guess in some way shape or form and joey styles goes huh <laughs> sick of this commentary team it's so bad he's also claimed that chavo and ray don't really like each other uh the guerreros didn't like anybody and also chavo never liked eddie it's just (laughs) coach talking this whole match it's so (laughs) fucking bad and it doesn't get better i don't know if i have notes on the commentary later but just know peter gabriel who was listening it's awful yeah i'm sorry to listen to this peter gabriel we're in the big time 
true. <laughs> they should not be in the big time. So they finally cut backstage to Carlito and Chris Masters. And I think Martin wanted to talk about this segment. I don't want to, but by virtue of everything I've said on this show, I feel compelled to address oh, absolutely. Like Carlito and Chris Masters. It's your guy. Involved. Yeah. I love the Qatari Pro Wrestling League. It's my favorite. Mwah, they're beautiful. <laughs> Way better than NXT 2.0, probably. I don't know. Um, put scripts in Qatar is all I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Anyway, so we've got Chris Masters and Carlito in a locker room backstage. Chris Masters just oiling up his many large muscles, and Carlito is here bragging about uh, surviving getting hit with a chair by Shaq. And I had to look this up, and we can't find the video footage of it, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But apparently what happened is Carlito went to a Miami Heat game in, uh, like, three days before this show, I think, and began taunting Heat player Jason Williams and Shaq in a bid to defend the honor of his teammate, grabbed a chair, snuck up behind Carlito, and struck him with a chair. They didn't show footage of this. I can't find footage of it. The The only video that appears to have ever existed is on a WWE.com on a link that no longer works that we found on a wrestling forum somewhere. Yeah, it's, um, it's fucked. I, I, I hate how bad this shit is archived because it's just like, man, I really want to watch Shaq beat the shit out of Carlito, but we can't. And Carlito complains about it, and we we don't know the context. It yeah, sucks. Yeah, they don't. Sh they don't show this to you. I don't know why. There's a lot of stuff they don't really show you on this show. I don't know what happened to production here, but yeah. So Carlito says, "I survived getting hit with hit with a chair. Nobody can take Carlito down." And then he doesn't understand why Chris Masters is mad at him. At, and then he proceeds to recap all of the things uh, Carlito has done to Chris Masters, like eliminating him from the Rumble, fucking him over in the chamber, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And as Chris Masters going to loom over him, Carly's like, wow, dude, come on, it was an accident, I swear. And then Chris Masters slaps the fucking shit out of him, and it was awesome, yeah. and says, now we're cool. Respectfully we speaking, Chris Masters looks incredible. That man looks like a star. It just sucks that he's not that good in the ring. That man looks incredible. <laughs> yeah, my guy needs, like, a hair plug, but he is yeah. very big and muscly. Yeah. And I wish I was Carlito. At that moment in time. <laughs> uh, and we get commercial. Uh, we are shown the Subway Slam of the Week, which is Carlito eliminating Chris Masters from the Rumble. Notably, no slam involved there. It's just Chris Masters getting thrown over the rope. I feel as though the Subway Corporation is lying to me, and this is false advertising. Ridiculous. And then we get the tag title match as far as i know uh the first time kane and the big show have been on screen together at all since we've been watching this it's been a month i i again remembered that they were the tag champions because they were advertised as such for this i've finally been uh, vindicated after yelling about this for i, I think every episode i go mm -hmm. kane and big show are the tag champs they never show up together they get a fucking mixture goddamn entrance music that goes well <laughs> And I was like, what the fuck? Like, they have a combo entrance? This is bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, dude. The Kane show or whatever. Oh, my God. Um, it, so, it... <laughs> and the way I watch these shows, I know Ty mentioned he looks at the card beforehand. I don't. I just let it come to me as Vince truly wanted his visions to be interpreted. Uh, so in the intro where they're running down the card, I say that they advertise this fucking match. And I almost just turn the show off and say I'm not doing it. <laughs> I persevere. Uh, so, for, how can Carlito possibly coexist with Chris Masters for the seventh <laughs> straight week is the theme of this uh, match. I write here that a uh, low chemical plane is probably going to be the only good part of this whole fucking match. And I am immediately vindicated when uh, the second the bell rings, just an immediate brawl to the outside because none of these motherfuckers want to take any bumps or do anything. They have no ideas. They don't, they, this is the only way they can fill out seven minutes without, you know, maybe actually wrestling or trying. Big Show chops the shit out of Carlito. That was awesome. Kane power slams Carlito, smacks Chris Masters in the face. Carlito eventually takes back over. Chris Masters pulls Kane to the outside, throws him into stairs. Again, throw Big Man into stairs. I have no ideas. 
This allows us to eat up a minute as Kane just dies on the outside. Chris Mast goes, hey, hey, and Carlito makes a dumb face. Kane gets thrown back in, gets hit with basic strikes for another about a minute. Uh, he has told the, it does, that doesn't work for me, brother, on Carlito in terms of I'm not taking any bumps this whole match. You're going to take the four that we have. That was awesome. I respect Carlito getting out politicked in any way. Uh, Chris Masters comes back in. He locks in the master lock on Kane. Kane makes it over the rope. Show punches Chris Masters right in the head to break Kane out of the master lock. So still nobody has actually gotten out of it. Big Show gets a hot tag, throws around all of these boys, slaps the shit out of Carlito again. The only time I'm popping for this match is when anything bad happens to Carlito specifically. <laughs> Uh, Big Show then throws Chris Masters around, uh, starts running toward the ropes. Carlito does a thing where they pull on them to drop the guy. Big Show extremely slowly tumbles over the top rope like a feather. Uh It was very graceful, but also a very clear, I ain't taking any bumps for this shit, brother. And he's right to do it, but still. King gets put in the master lock again, but he is illegal when this is happening so big show uh runs back into the ring and chris masters drops the master lock so again kane has been in it twice but he's never broken out of it by himself so it's fine and then big show is too as too thick of a brain holster so uh chris masters can't put the master lock on him uh they double team chris masters double choke slam pin when music plays i think it's mostly just big shows you know this was slightly better than I expected. Fuck all of these guys. Please get Chris Masters the hell away from Carlito. Get Carlito off the show entirely. He does nothing. He doesn't want to do anything. He just makes a dumb face and then puts on a bad match. Listen, you're going to hate me for this, but I like this match. I gave it a two star. Now, yeah, hear me. Like, out. I thought it was a sprint. It was fun. They beat the shit out of each other. Yeah, it was six minutes. Six minutes on a TV show is not that long. I anything. I anything these people do could not be called. <laughs> that is charitable. I I didn't even remember like a single like rest hold. They just were going like off on each other constantly. Like Masters throws Kane into the steel steps. Yeah, and then Kane sells for forty five seconds. Carlito, hey, Carlito in the head for another minute in the <laughs> ring. That's the rest spot. I liked it. I thought it was fun. <laughs> Yeah, this is, I mean, Big Show is moving, you know, and you say that with a, a ginormous block of salt. Big Show, Big Show was, was putting, getting his steps in tonight, and it was cool, that segment when he got the the hot tag, and it was just bashing everybody. I thought that was actually pretty cool. That's probably the fastest we've seen Big Show move in any of these episodes at all, and it's probably the fastest he's moved in like two years, <laughs> which was good, and I did like seeing him just tumble just so beautifully out of that ring and then when they win you know when big show gets the pin and they win kane just starts like skanking (laughs) at the end of their celebration it's just like how uh mario was telling me he did that with the leg drop yeah he starts like shaking and moving as if he was hearing the like the trombone and and some keys playing behind him. And then he gets that. out of the ring and he starts shaking too. Like he he's really getting a skank on here. He's and so excited I, I gotta to appreciate be, it. He's so excited to be the tag team champs. He's so happy. Finally. They Finally were, he's the only one that comes out with it. Big show never even comes out with it. They like he likes Big being Show tag Big Show looked at that belt and went, uh and Kane's just like, Yes! I'm we retained, Kane, we retained. We did it. And Big Show's like, ah, eh, whatever. <laughs> Man, <laughs> I don't know. I, I I I enjoyed it for what it was. I guess I'll talk about this now because it's going to feed into the next thing we're about to talk about. At some point during the commercial break, which Jerry Lawler explains to us as they're showing B-roll of the arena, uh, if you subscribe to Raw Unlimited or whatever, you could have seen this, but they didn't show it to us because they need to make their two ninety nine a month or whatever. Uh, Carlito was mad at the ref, and then Rob Van Dam came out and chased him off with a chair or something. Yeah, as me, the viewer, I had to ask before we started, did RVD attack Carlito? Because the next promo with RVD and Maria, he's sweating and he's out of breath. And Maria goes, why would you do such a thing? And I'm like, what the fuck are they talking about? We re-watch- we all rewatched this segment. And I only picked it up because I watched into the intro of this and it was Jerry Lawler talking about it. So he, he calls Carlito a piece of trash. 
and he's done talking about it. And then he does his little RVD thing. And I'm like, what the fuck was that? Also, what happened? So we have two segments in a row from the pre-match to the post-match promo, and both of them are contexts that are lost to the internet, and we cannot find it. Because <laughs> WWE.com Unlimited is gone. I don't know if it was ever archived. And then the Carlito promo with Shaq also lost the annals of history. We, we are researching it. that. By we, the way. we are I am trying. working on it. I have reached out to the Miami Heat Facebook group <laughs> can to you, find that footage. Can you? So far, no comment. Can you reach out to WWE and see if we they got any WWE.com unlimited footage as well? I'll, I'll, I'll get to work on it. All right, appreciate yeah, email it. Vince. Sweet. Okay, so then Todd is with Mickey James, and Mickey's ecstatic she's so excited to be here she had she's gonna be celebrating trish being the best women's champion of all time you know like all these women that were great they're all dime store hookers compared to trish her quote not mine mickey says oh that. yeah who was it who was on the lineup it was it was joan of arc uh-huh a uh, great woman uh queen elizabeth uh-huh a uh, great woman according to mickey james um and even angelina jolie who Mickey James declares these are all dime store hookers compared to Trish Stratus. And, like, who is this joke for? When was the last time anybody's ever been to or seen or walked into a fucking whatever the fuck a dime store is? Dime store. It was Vince McMahon when he was growing up. Yeah. <laughs> like, the last time anybody's ever, like, been to a fucking dime store was, like, probably during the Vietnam War. Oh, wait, fucking no. Vince, little little baby Vince walks into a fucking dime store and sees some some dumbass fuck. Like seriously, like I don't know anybody who could relate to. It. I heard that I'm like, what? Well, well now hold a dime up. store. Well, hold Shut up. up. I, I just looked up dime store on Google and it says there's sorry. A that's restaurant. my that's my one rant of tonight. Oh, hold I didn't, on. Did she I didn't understand who this joke was for. Much like I don't understand who many of these jokes are for throughout the shows, but that one just kind of that one just kind of got to me. Listen, so, she might be I'm talking sorry for about my composure. She might here, be talking about the dime store in downtown the Detroit. Ever heard. Downtown Poor Detroit Mickey for having to say this. Buddy, they got but, a restaurant yeah. in Detroit called Dime Store. I got heat with dime stores, brother. It's here. It's in it's in our uh, it's in Detroit, pal. We should go. And we should ask them about it. Cuz I'm looking up where did the term dime store come from and it just brings up the the store. Apparently it's one of the oldest skyscrapers in Detroit, the Dime Saving Bank building. So the dime store. That's what they're talking about. I guess, because <laughs> if that, I don't know. <laughs> Everybody in Orlando is very familiar with that. I'm sure. Do you think? Do you think we'll be able to film the next uh, Raw Down at the Dime Store, it, like in honor of Mickey James saying that, and we can all be I, Dime Store hookers together? I'll be there. I'll be there too. <laughs> no, Martin might not be there. <laughs> he'll he'll phone in. Mickey says that uh, Trish proved that she loved her, too, by counting one, two, three. So I think she expects uh, a big, like, smooch in the ring during the celebration. Can't wait to see Ooh. that celebration because, you know, she's very happy. I'm glad to see her happy. They keep recapping all this bullshit from um, New Year's Revolution. Get over it. Edge ain't even champ no more. So then the next segment is the Sheldon Benjamin match with Goldust. I think Martin wanted to take, talk about this. Boy, do I. I might say this is the match of the night. <laughs> I, think some of, I think some of it is funny and some of it is horrendous. I think this might be the content segment of the night, if nothing else. Oh, yeah. B very uh, smack up segment here, I think. Wow. Uh, and if, what, I, what I heard from the pre-show from what this, episode, this week of smack up is uh, you guys are in for just a treat of an episode. So Shelton comes out wheeling Mama Benjamin out in a wheelchair that she has acquired, and she is also using an oxygen mask. We believe this is due to uh, Goldust just being a weird pervert and making her faint or something. And so he wheels her out. As he's going by the steps, some guy in front row that's sitting there has a sign that's, that says, Shelton, is that Martin Lawrence? And the, oh, that's the, uh, the sign guy. bring it up and talk about it and zoom in on it. So there's your racism quota for the night. Do you do you know about that guy? 
No. So that guy and... shows up to every show. He'll wear his backwards cap. I don't know when he stopped doing it, but they they call him like the sign guy. So he always well, brings signs to the show. Well, I hope he's dead. Um, <laughs> so and then before and then as Goldust comes out, a uh, renowned F slur enthusiast Jerry Lawler says, "I'm sure Brokeback Mountain is Goldust's new favorite movie." Oh my. Yeah. So we've just got a whole lot already in this match which is actually pretty good yeah i mean shelton's just really good he's doing a whole bunch of stuff the crowd starts chanting mama's boy Mm -hmm. and mama benjamin just starts yelling that's right he is what about it i know nico hates this lady i love this lady she's great so much she's the best just super into it i mean again the material she's given bad shouldn't have happened however the actress she's, is fantastic. Yeah, she's doing just God's work with all of this. I love this lady. Um, so they start having the match. Shelton does a bunch of, you know, Shelton Benjamin stuff. The same stuff we talk about all the time. He's the freak athlete. Uh, turns a suplex. He Goldust goes to suplex him over the rope, and instead of coming down on his neck, he flips himself over, lands perfectly on his feet, and then smacks the shit out of him. But... At some point, Goldust has sort of been taking over this whole match. Uh, he sets up, he sets up Shelton for shattered dreams. Mama gets out of the chair and starts threatening Goldust with her slipper. This distracts the ref, so Goldust just runs over and hits Shelton with a shattered dreams anyway. Goldust then leaves the ring and starts doing I wrote starts doing Goldust things because I didn't want to describe it to Mama Benjamin, who then falls back in her chair and gets her oxygen mask again. Goldust then rolls back into the ring. Shelton kicks him right in the head. Uh, commentary this whole match has been very into Mama Benjamin and laughing at everything she's doing. So I'm also popping huge for her. And then after he kicks him in the head, Shelton wins. T-bone suplex. Uh, if this is a feud, it's extremely problematic. However, I was entertained by it. And the match was pretty all right. Some of this was legitimately funny. Like, I thought the slipper thing was fun. I thought you was about to smack his ass with it. I was ready for it, but oh that my. didn't happen. That would have been a little too suggestive, I think. I think it would have oh, been maybe. funny to hear uh, see Golos going, Ha! Well, maybe it's <laughs> not for a few months. You know they can get a whole lot of stuff out of this. Th- this was the most sports entertaining match of the night to me, with the amendments that I've laid out. And again, none of this should have happened. But, <laughs> still... Yeah, I... Goldust continues to be the best road in the business. How does he keep doing it? How does he do it? He should be in the main event of WrestleMania 39. I don't it's know why rare. I said that. I don't know why I said that, but I think I Man, think Goldust when, when should we get be, there. Yeah, when we get there, I think Goldust should be in there. You can quote me on this because this Goldust is January 30th, 20, 2006. <laughs> Goldust would have won. I give it like so... two stars. Two stars it was fun. Is the best Sheldon they've given him like this year. Because every everything else, they give them, like, shit opponents. And they finally give yeah. them a good opponent, and it's fun. I, I did enjoy this. Goldust did help make this very enjoyable. Unlike all of the other Shelton Benjamin matches we've had, unfortunately. And not to the detriment of Shelton Benjamin. Because he wrestles his ass off every time he's in there. Whether it be against Sean, Viscera, Saving Ryan's Privates guy. Oh, Valpenis. Uh, yeah, Valpenis. Uh, Shelton... Shelton's doing his best, and right here, Goldust I think was able to get get some good out of it because he's a, a good wrestler, and because he's funny and it's dumb. Absolutely, so, I loved it. And then we got that Shell Benjamin, Mama Benjamin, Ric Flair, Vince's Devils promo. So Shelton's wheeling Mama Benjamin around backstage. She tells him to drop her off at the women's bathroom, which he does, and then he looks right, and we in the camera look right and rick flair is over there talking to vince's vixens about whatever shelton just completely oblivious to rick trying to get his dick wet just walks right in rick uh sends them away to turn and look at this awkward man that just decided to ruin his whole conversation and it's like hey what's up and shelton's like hey rick i got my confidence back now and i want my ic belt back and Rick goes, that's cool, but you're a mama's boy, and those don't beat the nature boy. And then he woos at him, does the Ric Flair strut <laughs> a few feet away, turns around, woos at him again. Ric Flair struts a few more feet, 
lose again, and then Ric Flair struts <laughs> away again, and that's the segment. I, I, I love the woo from across the hallway. It was very good. <laughs> woo. Progressively further away woo. Was very <laughs> woo, woo. You're a mama's boy. Woo. I thought that shit was hilarious. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Man. Yeah, no points. Um, listen, Sheldon versus Rick might be good. And I'm hoping for that to be good. God, please. Maybe at the Saturday Slam or whatever's coming up. Saturday Saturday morning Slam. I can't wait for yeah, that show no. to exist. <laughs> so next we got the best moment of the night. Oh. We got the Mickey James Trish Stratus celebration. Oh my goodness. Joe wants to talk about it because Trish was looking respectful. I oh, think. oh, absolutely. If Mickey I were to say out, it. Yeah, well... We're we're all we're all thinking it, so we might as well say it. So much respect is about to happen. So much respect is happening before us. Um, Mickey comes out and and gets us warmed up and introduces the one and only, the best women's champion ever in the history of the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, Trish Stratus comes out and she's not enthused at all. Uh, Why very did she clearly. Speak <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't think she agreed to this. I just think she's not able to break it to to Mickey. She doesn't have the heart to break it to her. But she she reluctantly comes out, and as soon as she steps into the ring, Mickey, boom! Let's let's all the confetti and balloons fly, which was actually it was I, actually a really cool visual. That was incredible. I'm surprised they put all this effort into a women's segment around this time. Cause like, yeah. god damn, that shit was awesome. The only problem was the fans were being fucking assholes and popping balloons or squeaking them. Cause I had the whole promo, M- Mickey would be like, "You are the best," and then I just hear, pop, pop, and I'm like, "What the like fuck?" A, it sounded like a war zone. Yeah. For Mickey, too. <laughs> the balloons that got dropped, they really went big. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it was great. She was like, some of them ended up like in the the ring too falling past trish and mickey and mickey was dancing around in them and then after the music stops she you know kind of warms everybody up yes during the war zone it was happening and mickey wants to get get some get some words out of, out of trish for how incredible the celebration was and before uh well actually no because then mickey introduces the one more surprise which is mickey and nikki and all the other mitch <laughs> members and mikey mitch. kenny and we yeah, are the spirit, the squad. spirit squad. We got to get that on the soundboard and only use that. Just Nikki. <laughs> Nikki. I don't know what your deal with Nikki is. He's just some <laughs> fucking cheerleader. I don't get it. Yeah, what's yeah, up with I Nikki? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Anyways, uh, they come out and uh, they. I don't. I didn't write down what their chant was, but basically it summed up to Mickey saw you naked and she loves you. Trish. Yes. We are the spirit squad. And then confetti flies for them. They get their own colored confetti. The, the, the balloons and confetti that Mickey had for Trish were like pink and red and uh, white. Um, and then the spirit squad gets their own confetti, which is green and white. And then uh, I think uh, Mikey starts like convulsing on the floor with them, <laughs> doing some kind of snowman at the top of the ramp with it. Um. And then Mickey's like, yeah, that was great. So what do you think? And then Trish, before she can, so upset, before she can even utter uh, a sentence, uh, the 2005 Women's Diva Search winner, Ashley, comes out storming to the ring. Well, not really. She comes out like walking and then she does like a half jog. And then the ring and the camera cuts to them in the ring. And then it cuts back to her stopping her half jog and then walking into the ring normally. Trish and everybody else thinks that Mickey is a uh, psycho who is obsessed with Trish. And Mickey's like, no. And then Ashley's like, oh, yeah. Do you think she's a psycho? And then points the mic to everybody where everybody starts chanting, psycho, psycho. Oh, man. Which, I mean, look. The women, again, the women in 2006. I'm sorry they had to do this. But yeah, everybody chants Psycho. And then Mickey's like, you don't think that, do you? To Trish. And Trish, not having an answer, confirms to Mickey that she does, in fact, think this about her. And dude, I was, I was, my heart was breaking. Breaking down in the ring, dude. This was sad. She might be incredibly obsessed with her to an unhealthy degree, but I still felt bad. 
and and Mickey seemingly is unable to cope with this. And Trish tries to like calm her down. She's like, "You're you're special. You're a special girl." And Mickey breaks <laughs> down again. She's like, "You do think I'm a psycho? What the heck, Trish?" And then she just starts crying more. And then just she's like, "All right, I'm out of here." And then tries to walk out of the ring. And then I think just pounces on Ashley again. Just gives her like a hellacious spear. To which I think Roman Reigns actually modeled his spear after hers because. Mickey, like, takes her out, which was awesome. And then Trish pulls Ashley off of her. So they start rolling around, which gives Mickey an opening to just just a devastating uh, Mick kick. (laughs) And Mickey's like, yeah, I did it. I knew you loved me because Trish pulled Ashley off. And she starts dancing around on the balloons and stuff outside of the ring, having a good time and skanking out. Tonight, everybody's skanking. What's going on? What's they, what's in the water in well, Orlando? Well, Peter Gabriel's the theme song, so they got to oh. be up up big time, you know. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> everybody everybody's feeling the big time. So, uh, although this this is once again a woman segment seems somewhat problematic, I did enjoy it. It was fun for what it was, but it it has this underlying issue that Vince thinks bipolar is funny, and it's really really uncomfortable to watch. <laughs> Yeah, bipolar is funny, and women's emotions don't matter. Like, does Vince really think women are all bipolar like this, or or are they just calling out Mickey for being psychotic when she has a clear issue? That they're all on the rag, dude. Oh my goodness. (laughs) God. I'm sure funny has talked about it. (laughs) Oh. Oh yeah, dude, his fucking uh, little comic that comes in a box of Cracker Jacks. Fuck. I think I think Vince hates mental illness and he thinks it's bad. So you just gotta think, make fun of it as much as possible. We know it's because Vince doesn't respect the women he abuses his power on. Uh huh. But yeah. So now it's time for the main event: WWE Championship match. John Cena is defending his championship against Edge in the rematch. Ah. Uh, Man, there was not a lot going on in this match. It was just, again, same thing that happened on Sunday. Just a very basic match between these two legends. I don't know what's going on in the water lately, but they just do not want to actually try. There's a sign that says rated D for dull, which I agree both about Edge as a whole person and this match. This match was so rough, man. It was... It's not like it's bad. It's not a bad match. But like considering the talent in the ring, you just expect so much more, and you just get disappointed. I think one of the best things was that there was a guy uh, with like a Colts jersey, uh, an Indianapolis Colts jersey in like the front row. He was wearing a Colts jersey. I think he was wearing a San Diego Chargers hat as well, and he was like taking video on his flip phone. Oh, that's Which so I, sick. That was just really funny. Uh, he was taking a video of Edge when he gets like a like a guillotine chokehold in on uh, Cena. Dude, I hope he showed all of his friends that and said, dude, look at this. I got this on my phone. And then you can barely see the pixels and like his friends went, oh, fuck yeah, dude. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> what a time, man. <laughs> I don't really have much play-by-play on this match. There's really nothing insane that happens. There was no really highlights this match. It was all just stuff. The only thing I can really talk about is the ending, which was actually very interesting. It makes me want to watch the next episode, where Edge finally like uh, n- like pushes Cena into the ref. Edge gives him the low blow, and he stays on that low blow, too. I laughed pretty hard, because he put all that chutzpah into that fucking... <laughs> he was like cranking his arm, making sure Cena's balls were blown off. Like he was grabbing Cena's balls just for effect. <laughs> how do you, how do you like? Cause he stayed there with the first one, and he did it like two more times after. That's what it looked like. Yeah. Cena gets up, gets speared, uh, but the ref is still you know seeing birds around his head. He can't. He doesn't know where he's at. He yells at Lita to grab a chair. She grabs the belt instead, and Cena picks. I don't know how Cena just got up real quick. Cena gets up real quick, puts Edge in the fu, and Lita hits him with the belt. I thought it was a mistake. I thought she like went and tripped or something like that, but looking back, she just hit Edge. Mm-hmm. Edge is yeah, it, devastated. It was, <laughs> it was unclear during the uh, the actual match, but the ref like was right in front of it. So yeah, 
and, and and with the confirmation of the replay, we saw that Lita just misses John Cena's head completely. And, it wasn't even like an accident. Nails the edge, yeah. yeah. And then, you know, like if that was Cena getting hit by that, you know, Cena's head would be exploded in blood. It would be like a Mortal Kombat a fatality, but Edge somehow survives the blood allegations. Yeah, well, we know all that impact went into his neck and blew and that up. This is the first time we see John Cena not exploding and gushing blood all month. It's very wild to see that. They well, no, you know what? You know what? They did show it during the promo earlier for New Year's Revolution. They cut the Cena just gushing blood. <laughs> it's, they can't help themselves. But yeah, Edge Edge wins by disqualification. Jerry Lawler's baffled. Jonathan Coachman is just saying uh, like the stats of the the NFL game or something. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. God, Coach is so stupid, dude. Coach is talking about the, the Stanley dumb, Cup Finals. But... I don't, dude. He's just saying stuff. But I thought it was great, yeah, because the ending where Edge is just visibly confused by what just happened, holding his head. John Cena is incredibly confused. I mean, he retains the championship, but he doesn't know what just happened. Lita's the only one confident in what just happened, which, yeah. like you say, I, I do want to watch the next one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, that, that elevated the match. I gave it like a two-star because I was like, damn, this is interesting. I would have given it a one. It was nothing. But then the ending actually gave it a purpose. Yeah, and that's, that's really sad for a title match, like a WWE championship match where it's just bad, boring. Well, hold on, because this is a WWE title match on a TV show. True. Which had commercials playing in the middle of it. So yeah. but uh, I don't know if they were strapped for time. It, it, I mean, they weren't even strapped for time. They went for like, what, 12 minutes? It was 11.45. Or 11.40, okay. yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, they just... Look, this was this was phoned in until they... I, they, they, they booked this match, I think, backwards. They yeah. knew what they wanted the ending to be, and then Vince or whoever was like, hey, I don't care. Do a house show match. Yeah, go go do the ending. I don't care. Get out of my face. Um, oh, real quick, I didn't do the ben- Sean Benjamin match. I'd give it a two star as well, but that's because it was funny. Very much enjoyed it. So all together, the show was pretty just decent. I'd give it like, like just like a three, three and a half all together. It was like one of the better shows of the year it wasn't it wasn't tlc match good but it was it was probably like the second best show of 2000 or january i'd say if we're gonna go by january standards there's a lot yeah, that mean, happened <laughs> a lot yeah. and nothing was completely bad except for schnitzky really yeah i mean but like even then it was still good to see like rvd come back from yeah. his i was it it wasn't a real injury was it he just wanted like time off to i Honestly, some hookers I have and blow. no idea. He might have just got hookers and blow. Okay, yeah. But we respect it. We respect yeah. RVD. No, I respect it, yeah. But yeah, I mean, even then, like, I, I don't think this was a, a bad show at all. This was a this was a meh show with some really, like, great moments. It had its low points, but I think its high points, like, made it okay. Absolutely. I agree with Joe, honestly. <laughs> Fine, you know, some stuff was entertaining. I had nothing. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm just grading on a curve of problematic at this point. But <laughs> nothing truly abominable this week, which I guess is a plus. So absolutely. And we got and, raw and down. 